Well, everyone, it's 7.05, and we're going to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to open us up in prayer, and then I'm going to say hi to my mom. I see she in there styling and profiling. Uh, but let's pray. Lord, we come today. We thank you and honor you and bless you for all that you've done. We thank you, Lord, that as we gather at the end of another week, Lord, that you just strengthen our minds, our bodies, and our spirits, that you bless our time together in community and in fellowship and in prayer and in conversation, Lord, that you would just knit us closer together. Lord, bless today's conversation. Let your name be magnified and glorified, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And we got uh, Nichelle online with us on Facebook, Wanda's on there with us on Facebook. So we say hello to all of you. I know it's a couple other people out there because the numbers uh, are more than just Nichelle and Tawanda. Uh, but I always want to start uh, with just encouraging everyone to sign up for our email list at hotsministries.com. If you did, you would have got our new uh, man a minute for this week on yesterday, as well as our new blog uh, for uh, the month of November, The Power of More, The Importance of Community. And so um, I encourage you to go. I've been looking. The numbers are more than they typically are at this point. Uh, so somebody's reading it. And so if you have not, please go and read. They're usually no more than three, four, five minute at the most reads. I don't try to write dissertations or anything. So, so go there, check it out. Because in this time of isolation, in this time of loneliness, and I think another article I did uh, previously is that people are alone more. I was in a meeting today and they were talking about that our millennials and Gen Zs, but really millennials, because they were the ones in college, are really isolating themselves by design. It's, it's not like, you know, us where we like to hang out and be with your buddies and all that, but some of them choose to be by themselves or they're even more particular and selective about who they have in their space. Uh, so uh, the power of more is important. It comes from Ecclesiastes where he says two is better than one and so forth and so on. Uh, so give that a look, but sign up hotsministries.com. Also, please click uh, the thumbs up if you're on Facebook, that means you're liking uh, this live stream and also click the arrow that's pointing to the right to share this on your Facebook page. I cannot tell you the number of times people come up to me. They can't be here with us now, but they do go back and watch and they say we enjoy it. Uh, you know, they go on YouTube, catch it there if they don't have Facebook accounts. Uh, so people do watch and listen and enjoy what we're doing. Of course, I want you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Type in IC Hayes when you're in YouTube and my uh, video page will pop up and hit uh, subscribe. And then also please invite other people to join Cafe Mana. Uh, I am happy to announce that we now have a TikTok account. <laughs> uh, we also now are on Pinterest. Uh, and uh, might be one more other thing, but I know we're now on TikTok and Pinterest because I am ramping up for a big announcement. So, so, so the website's going to get revamped. There's a bunch of things I'm doing incrementally because uh, I got so much going on, uh, but I got some big news coming in the early part of next year. And so all that we're doing is building up expanding our base, doing podcasts, interviews, all these things for this announcement I'm, I'm going to make an early part of next year, if not before. And so we are laying the groundwork uh, to be able to reach more people. So go to TikTok if you all do that and, and, and uh, follow me on TikTok. And if you're on Pinterest, which is a bunch of pictures and stuff, you can do that there as well. So um, I want to start and welcome Audrey uh, to, um, to the cafe. And so I wanna start with our question, a question, a question, a poll question actually, because this is something uh, that I've been noticing more and more lately. It, it, anytime I read a story like this in the morning, uh, I take like an hour, 30, 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how late I wake up, 
and I read through news articles in my uh, iPad. They kind of collate them and stuff. And so whenever I see a missing person, I always pray right then and there for God to send angels to uh, have them um, find these people and bring them back. And Demetrius uh, just said that she needs prayer. So I'm going to hold on one second with this because this is what community is about. Uh, Demetrius just said that she found out her uh, stepfather uh, passed. So uh, Demetrius, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to ask Dr. Hayes if you would just pray right quick for Demetrius. We certainly uh, send our condolences to you and your family, and we are praying with you and for you, and we're going to pray right now. Uh, let's time. So Heavenly Father, we come boldly before your throne, and we do that because it's in Jesus' name that we have access to you, and your words say that we can do it and trust in you. You said, he that come to you must believe that you are, and that you are a reward of those that will diligently seek you. So we seek you, oh God, to be the comforter for this family, God. You know um, the heart of these, this family and Demetri and the things that she's feeling herself, God. Lord, we know that loss is hard for us, God. We know that there's a plan that you have, but for us from the human perspective, we quite, um, we struggle with it, God. And so there are moments of just sadness and just um, loneliness and just experiencing that loss. And so we pray for this family that you would undergird them, that you would lift them, that you will be the healer, you will be the comforter, that you would like to allow the Holy Spirit to be bold and to be present for them, God, and that the Holy Spirit would do what you designed it to do, and that is a comfort. And so, God, we just pray again for this family as they all begin to uh, get things together and prepare. Lord, help them to just have the, the financial strength and even just the support just to do this, God. And we just thank you again for our dear sister, Lord. And we just uh, come as a family to encourage her and to just pray and undergird her in prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for doing that. We, I, I didn't want to let that go, right? We, we uh, you know, like I said, uh, the blog this month is about the power of more, the importance of community, mm -hmm. right? And, mm -hmm. and so that's what Cafe Manor is, is it's a community. And that's why we come back, uh, you know, every week is because community is important. And, and in my earlier meeting today, that was the thing I was trying to drive home to these individuals that we have to create community for our college students. If you're at U of I, and other members of your church go there, you need to be connected with them. It, it just makes no sense. Um, so uh, Demetrius, we're praying for you and, and let us know, uh, you know, how you're doing as we continue to move on um, in the days and weeks to come. Um, and, and so I did, uh, so, so talking about the missing person piece. So here's the question, poll question. What do you think is attributing to all these missing persons that we are seeing in the news? Is it crime? Is it the occult? Is it organ harvesting? Or you don't know. So take a few minutes to uh, let me know what you think all of this missing person stuff is about. Crime, uh, you know, now that we got all these witches and warlocks, uh, out and about now and people in the demonic stuff. Is it them? Is it orvis, uh, har uh, organ harvesting? Or are you like, I don't know what it is. I see Crystal's on with us on Facebook. What's up, Crystal? Give you a couple more moments. I see Gerald on Facebook with us. Okay. Let me stop the poll here. And it looks like, I hope y'all can see, because I don't know if this thing be sharing or not, but it looks like 50% said or, uh, organ harvesting, and 50% of you all said you don't. No. So it's interesting uh, because every time people come up missing now, you know, particularly if they're African American, the, the first thing I read or hear on the Facebook and Twitter pontificators 
uh, is that um, they harvest in people's organs, right? That, that's what they always say, the conspiracy theories to the, from the young lady uh, who they found dead in the hotel, you know, a couple years ago, even today to the young man who was a fellow alumni of, uh, of, of, of my school, Illinois State University, who they're still trying to find out what happened to him. It always comes up in, in, in the underground. Um, but then you also read about, you know, sometimes is the occult, right? Particularly around Halloween. I was just reading an article in um, uh, the Christian Post and this lady, she's now a believer, but she was saying how she used to be in the cult. And, you know, and that Halloween was really a time where they felt like, uh, you know, I'll just say the demonic power was at its height. And mm -hmm. so, uh, but the Lord brought her out of that lifestyle. So thank God for that. And then of course you just got crime, right? Just things happen. We, we, we had the young white lady with her boyfriend and I'm not saying names intentionally um, that, you know, we're still trying to figure out exactly what happened to her. They found him dead. He's the lead suspect. But, you know, all of this is happening. And so I just wanted to get your opinion on what do you think is going on that we have all these missing persons? And I see uh, Latanya with her hand up. Yeah, um, I think we saw the same person, the the lady who was in um, witchcraft and God has brought her out. And she was sharing that uh, a lot of times around this time, a lot of people go missing because people that are of the occult world, the witches and other things like that, they, they take these people and they offer them up. But one other thing that I think about too, that could be uh, a reason for it is also for the trafficking, the sex trafficking ring thing you know that's still very um active and happening so you know you're taking people and you're you know doing that but of course i think it's a it's just everything you mentioned crime the occult um and i think sex trafficking uh are maybe some causes and then i i keep saying that i think i feel like whatever with this COVID, I just think it has done something to the cognitive of people it just seems like it's been more violence and crimes and shootings and uh, carjacking and just a lot of this kind of stuff here lately. I, I don't, it just seems to me that it's something has happened to the mind where people are just, where maybe they were able to hold back or not give in to those inclinations or whatever, not to be as angry or irritated. It's like, it's just magnified now to me. You know, people are so. I I don't know. It's it's a good question though, but no, I don't know. It could be it could be any of those, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Yeah, and sex trafficking is another one. That that's something. It's not my calling or my passion, but it is something that also bothers me. The the sex trafficking thing, and you know, oftentimes, uh, every day now I get two or three uh, friend requests that I know are um, not real requests, right? The, the, the way the women are looking in the photos, you can tell they offering more uh, than to be my friend, uh, even if that's the real person in the photo. But I always think in my mind, is this young lady being trafficked? You know what I mean? Uh, and, and, and it bothers me, it bothers me. I say, I wonder if this uh, lady, this girl, I know- well, It's me, not uh, only women, uh, it's not only women being trafficked. No, no, no doubt. It's men being trafficked as well, and boys, little girl. It's just, it's so, but yes, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Krista was saying that sometimes people are, are uh, making arrangements to meet these kids way mm -hmm. out somewhere and then and, and kidnap mm -hmm. them. And as you just talking about a, a friend's autistic nephew was taken for 10 days, but they, you know, thank God they found him. And so, uh, so yeah, it, it's, it's a lot going on and I wanna uh, welcome Mary. Uh, and thanks for joining us. Um, so any other thoughts? What do you think is going on with all these missing persons? I mean, it's a bunch of them right now. You know, they got the one guy on camera, he had left the party or something and, and he's missing. And another person I think after work is, is just out of control. So any other thoughts of why we have all of these missing persons? 
Martha, I see you unmuting. You going to sleep on us or what? You no, I'm not <laughs> sleeping on you. I'm trying to keep my phone still so it won't uh, go in and out. <laughs> no, I'm not going to sleep. But um, my thought was, I, you know, you have the organ harvesting and uh, that's, that's alive and well. And then you have trafficking and, and I don't think, uh, we have the manpower to really do what needs to be done because there's so much happening at one time. And then you have all these drive-by shootings. Um, and it just appears that death is everywhere. And as people, I think we hear it so much until we come no, numb to it. But I'm not numb to it, you know. It's I, and yes, I think some of it is an occult. Um, I think uh, there are some that's witchcraft. I think it falls in all classifications. I really do. But yes, more than anything, an occult. Okay, so you think it's it's, it's some of that increase, you know? And I wonder as we think about that, we're closer to the Lord's return. Yes. When the Lord first came, there was a heightened amount of demonic activity. Absolutely. Coming. Uh, you know, in, in the second coming, could that be a possibility, right? And then there are other implications now. Does that mean the apostolic anointing of the church is going to return? Because we're going to have to deal with this. We <laughs> so are. Tanya said, I hope so. Um, because oh, you, you can read my list. <laughs> This stuff is prevalent on TV. I mean, you know, all of these stations, particularly as it's targeted towards millennial and Gen Z, is witches and werewolves. Yes. And, you know, uh, you know, it ain't bewitched. You know, I mean, this is high tech, high drama, highly attractive, you know, individuals that can capture the attention of, of, of our young people. And, and so uh, folk are into that. And, uh, yes. You know, it, yes, important. absolutely. Yeah. I was just uh, talking to one of the uh, teachers at school today while I was waiting on my granddaughter. Um, and we were talking about that very thing that it appears when you're driving around uh, through the city, it's like, like everything is all calm. And, you know, I said, but it's actually two worlds out there. It's actually two that's going on at the same time. And you're riding around like you're totally safe. And then all of a sudden things happen. Say for this week, uh, at, let's just say yesterday. Yesterday on 63rd from King Drive to State Street. I don't know if you can picture that. But it's a, it's a 30 mile zone. And then it drops down to 20 immediately. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, by the time we made it to Michigan, that's the shortcut for me to go through to Lindbrook because I'm coming from Col Gary Comer. So I'm dashing through it, although my, my daughters tell me I should not be in those areas at all. Anyway, <laughs> but that's what I do. And it was a BMW X5 and it was a black sedan truck. And they were literally, it was people in the back seat that was literally shooting at the cars. It was like the Wild West. Mm -hmm. But the, and it was eight cars involved. And I said, God, I thank you. Cause if I had been five minutes earlier or two minutes earlier, mm -hmm. I would have been in the midst of it. But uh, that BMW was totally destroyed and the people did not make it through that was in it. And I knew, I said, oh my God, they just left that school down. I saw them when they pulled off in front of us. You know, it's the school right there by the grocery store right before you get to King Drive. Yeah, I know which one. That's where they had, they had picked the kids up and had just left there. And so you have to think about all this stuff that's happening all of a sudden. And we can't be naive that evil is not here. Because evil is here and deception is here in full bloom. So we have to be vigilant. 
-hmm. and pray over our kids and, and everybody else's kids. Because kids, all kids belongs to everybody. That's the way I, I was taught. So we have to pray over them and pray over your possessions and where you are at all times also. But it's, it's just amazing the things that happen all of a sudden. And they were driving in this black sedan like, you know, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. They didn't even break their speed. They were just shooting out the back windows. I thought, that is crazy. Right. So what like do you say? <laughs> yeah. So what do you say would cause young people? Because you could see their, you could see their shadow. It's more of a shadow because they had a hood on the ones that was hanging out the window shooting. And it was like, it was a game, like the paintball. You know, have you ever heard the paintball? It was like the paintball. I thought, how sick can that be? So you, do you think it's mental? What do you think it is? Is it anger? Is it because? I'm gonna tell you what I think it is. I okay. think um, I've seen some documentaries with some of the younger people who are in gangs. Some of these things are gang driven, Yes, I think. And I think it could also be, this is part of an initiation. You have to yes. complete some in that regard. And I know even for some of them, I've seen this in some, some documentaries where they even have to get, this is what they do to numb themselves, even just to go through with it. They get high, they, all of that, just to even complete that type of an initiation. I, it's, it's, it's something, but it's, it's that, I think that's what that is. I think mm -hmm. a lot of the shooting we're seeing is that. And that's yes. why it's a lot of people getting shot, you know, innocent bystanders in the midst of this. And then some of it is just retaliation back and forth. Some is retaliation. Some of it is initiation. Some of it, this is what I think. My opinion. I don't, I can't say for certain, but I think some I of agree. it is. That. I agree. The games has a big part in it. Yeah, def def definitely spiritual and it's also sociological, right? Yes. And, yeah. and so when you're raised in that, which a lot of individuals are, there are some that were not raised in that. And so they have to be socialized to become violent and to take on that lifestyle. But that's a transition. But if you grow up in that, then your consciousness yes, Mm -hmm. is just different you're desensitized because yes. at seven eight nine ten eleven you, you you're doing all kind of stuff you, you know some of them kids if you saw when they pulled the old man out of that car a couple of months ago up up north it was like a nine or ten year old boy with one of them do you know what i mean so just think how mm -hmm. he's being socialized and mm -hmm. you always tease tanya about operating in classical conditioning but but that that is in my opinion, would be operant condition. And he's being conditioned to Super. commit crime. So by the time you turn 15, 16, 17, you know, oh, well, uh, it's, it's no big deal. So, and then you're talking about role modeling and, and it's, at the end of the day, it's spiritual fundamentally and then social, sociological formatively, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. It does. You the wonder. Other thing I was thinking too, the Bible even said this generation would be wickeder and wiser. Yes, it did. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm sure that that's part of some of this. A as part well. of it, yes. With this, I agree. With the time that we, because it's not just generation as far as kids, it's all mm -hmm. of us, because we all live now in this generation. Yes. And we can see where wickedness. Is, is happening in so many ways, just, yeah. It yeah. is. But it's spiritual, it's definitely. It's definitely spiritual. Usually spiritually, but then of course, as Isaac said, formative, thank you, using some of these psychology <laughs> words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your money to send me to seminary is paying off, see? see? <laughs> you making a sacrifice for me to use some of our money to 
Doris I'm glad Mario. to hear that. <laughs> and I'm glad Any, to help. Anybody else? Uh, uh, Crystal said, uh, you know, get out. Did we see get out because about the or organ harvesting thing? So, um, all right. Well, I got another poll for you here. Thank you all for sharing it, unless somebody else wanted to chime in on that piece. Okay. So I got another thing, and actually, Martha, you kind of led us into it. You gave us a nice little segue, and that is, is the Black church still one of the two most important institutions in the Black community? Is the Black church still one of the two most important institutions in the Black community? Give you all the time to chew on that one. Definitely, somewhat, not really, definitely not. And I'll explain what the two are, but is the black church still one of the two? And Gerald said the internet also, those internet games like Grand Theft Auto and so forth, do kind of fuel the violence and stuff because they're imitating those video games. That is true. It's a socialization piece. All right. Everybody has said definitely the black church is still one of the two most important institutions in the black community. So what I am doing right now is I'm doing research on the black theology as it relates to mission. What is the black church's understanding of what it means to be missional or to do mission? And so, you know, that that's what I'm researching and understanding. So I've been reading several books about the black experience in the United States of America. And so those books are picking up from 1619 Jamestown on on through through today and what they are saying and i've been telling tanya about this because i've been really learning about a lot and it's really been educating me about the african-american church uh, in particular at more so than the african-american community mm -hmm. but what they argue is that the two most important um institutions in the black community was the family and it was the church all right in, in some of these books are written in 1960 and so forth so, so you have to understand where they're coming from so they said the black community uh, black family and a black church and so as it relates to the family they were saying because the husband or at least the father could be sent away the kid could be sent away the mother <laughs> could be sent away the slave community became the family, right? So it, it was not about blood kinship as opposed to folk kinship, if you will, because if Johnny was sold to another plantation, that community there embraced him as family and, and vice versa and so forth. And so the other thing was, is that the church was the lone um, outlet that we had for some semblance of power, some semblance of freedom. They called it the invisible church because you couldn't do it in front of Massa, right? So it was the invisible church. And so as we you know, were liberated and free through the Emancipation Proclamation, it was the church that really became the conduit for the newly freed slaves, right? So everything went through us, whether it was the um, you know, insurance for burial, uh, whether it was you know, sororities or fraternities, they would meet in the churches. Uh, there was just so many things that were integrated and connected through the church. And so now as we become more cultured, <laughs> as we have become more well-to-do in American society, the idea and concept is that we no longer need the church. Right. And so that's why I'm asking, is the church still one of the two most important institutions in the black community? 
So that that's sort of the setup for the conversation. Any thoughts? Everybody said yes. So why does everybody say it's still important? All right, look like Martha. Look Kathy, like you're if you're talking, you need to unmute yourself. Out. We're gonna have to do a Zoom class for every. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Martha, you unmuted. You wanna, you wanted to say something more. I just wanted to say, yeah, the two avenues that has always uh, been established with uh, our people. We knew that God was the way out, and we knew that education was the other way out, and the two seem to have come together. And, and that's what was taught in the home. Um, plus, back in those days, uh, families stayed together no matter what. And now, families are so, far, I'm not saying all of them, but on a general, families are far apart to the point that they don't know who their immediate family are. Because when we started getting, started moving around to different parts of the, of the states. So therefore you didn't have that opportunity to get to know grandma and grandpa. And, and, and if you did, it was during the summertime and then you went back wherever you were. So you didn't get to have that passed down unconditional love that you normally had. And when you look at it, the family is largely comprised of single parenting, whether it be male or female. And, and I say that because, and I'm sure you realize that I always ask for prayer for the families because it is so important to the child I know people say, you know, the children are going to be fine. Uh, they can handle it, but they really can't. They cannot. And that's why they go out searching for that love that they're not getting at home. And, uh, and what I mean by that is I'm around a lot of uh, teenagers and, and older kids. And the one thing that always come up in conversation is that my mom and dad sold me out for a pair of sneakers it always come up they buy me all of this stuff when all I really want is them mm -hmm. so we have to go back and really try to build that community you know if you did something back in the day your grandmother beat you for it your daddy beat you for it your mama got you the people down the street got you you know, you just got beat all over. And your aunties. And your aunties. So you know what we're talking about. But they you don't tell have them that. to. Yes. You have to. Yes. So you don't have that now. And it's left up to just the, the mother or, or the father. And they come in and they're tired, which I don't understand. But they come in and they're tired. I know my father used to say, when you decide to have children, you gave up your life because it's all about the children. So, and now uh, children are not that precious commodity that they once were. And I think that's the missing piece. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let me, see. I see Tanya, see your hand out. Let me see if my mom... Can get get her mic to work and not the screen to work. You gonna push the mic button, or you you know, you don't have anything to say? All right, there you go. Oh, hey everyone. Oh yeah, I remember, I you remember we went to uh, I think it was Harlan High School, and we did um we talked about the church versus education. 
and the family. And you know, we did like a consultation and we'll split up in the different classrooms. All right, mm -hmm. anywho, mm -hmm. all a while back. <laughs> so anyway, so I, that's what I did. I talked about the church versus education and the family. And I talked about how we was, how we needed the family life incorporated with the education teachings in the school. And I talked about uh, how important religion plays a big part with the family. Right. Okay. Well, that's absolutely correct. That's not when they were doing them lambations things. I said, I'm not doing no lambation, right? Is that, <laughs> that's when we went there. I said, I don't know what that stuff is they're trying to do. Um, all right. But no, we do need to have it integrated. All of those are definitely important. Uh, Latanya? Yeah, I think even back then they were integrated because you had the church was in the school house and the and the all of that was all together. You know, uh, when you when you they left the church, then throughout the weeks the kids went to school in the church back in them days. But um, I would say yes, um, you, absolutely. The church is definitely a powerful institution to the black church. If it was not right. our the, the last election that we had with our former president, if you notice, they reached out to a lot of um, church leaders to try to get that influence because they know that the black church is a big powerful part. I don't know who's talking, who is a big powerful part of uh, the community because it, it, it affects a lot of things that we do. Um, if we could just go to the pandemic, I mean, right away, the churches were the ones who began to make sure there was food that was get, being given out. The churches were calling out to members, seeing how they were doing, not only just members, members, family, just people, even just people in the community. Um, if the community it, in itself, they may not even does, does not go to that church particularly they will come to the church to get some type of strength or support or financial resources. So definitely the church is, um, is a powerful entity when it comes to the black community, the black church and the black community. It, it plays a big, huge role and it's very influential, very influential, <laughs> very influential. Politicians know it and that's why they show up because the church is the family, the family members are sitting in that church, even if all the family members not there, grandmama's there. <laughs> and, and grandmama's gonna talk, call the daughters or the sons or whoever, you know? So yeah, I, I say yes, definitely. Yeah. And I didn't get to vote, but definitely. Oh, okay. Even sorry, financially, yes, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we started the mutual aid societies, like you said, Sunday school <laughs> was, how you know folk got to read um we you know the church was the hub of everything uh for the black community i mean literally everything and i think you know we talk about and it's black still history. here here again isaac um i think we still want the church to be the hub of everything we want the church to be the lawyer we want the church to be the counselor we want the church to be your broker we want the church to be everything we want the church to teach you how to write grants we want the church and they still do. The church do it. And the people expect the church to just do it all, which I always say, there's no way the church can be all of this because they're not specialties as that. But that's what we look for, right. even today. But, yeah. but here's what I mean. Not that the church did everything, but it was the hub, like the National Urban League, the NAACP. They held meetings, mm -hmm. you know, the Southern Christian yeah. Leadership Conference. They mm -hmm. held meetings at the church, like at I said, the, the church, sororities the and fraternities yes. were there uh, at the church. And even if the church didn't start the entity, it was a member or somebody connected to the church. Right. Like like Richard Allen, you know, founder of the AME Church. We know they started because they were, you know, him and Absalom Jones was trying to pray and they pulled them up off their knees while they was praying. They said, okay, fine. And so we lost all of that with integration. I'm not arguing against integration. I'm just saying, and, and now as I hear people talk against the black church from our community, 
what they keep saying is y'all need to stay out of politics. Y'all need to stay out of business. Y'all need to just deal with religion. And so I'm saying when this history of the church from slavery through Jim Crow, through civil rights to today has not been taught, then we understand why we have a secular movement for black advancement, i.e. Black Lives Matter, Mm -hmm. working and trying to move it, but they don't have the power of God. Right. And so the family and the black church are the two, the black family and the black church are the two institutions that are under attack and have been under attack. And so that's why I think I, I wanted to get you all thoughts. You know, I still got a little more reading to do and, and before I frame everything the way I want to frame it. But but I I, I knew it, but I didn't know it. It's just how critical the church was in the fight for liberation, for human dignity, all of the things that uh, we are still fighting for today. But those gains were only made because of the church. I see it. Anybody else before we pray? Uh, and Martha must have been looking at my notes because my if we would have had time, my other question was going to be how do we restore the tight knit families and communities we once had, but. That's a good question. <laughs> and, you know, and That's I'll just pontificate here question. since ain't nobody chiming in. Uh, because to, to Martha's point, I look at the, I don't want to call it the disintegration of our families because that's not true. The families still love each other, but they're not tight knit. Thanksgiving don't have as many bodies as used to have. You know, the holidays don't have as many bodies they used to have. I come from a small knit family, so we still gather, but I've been around other families that used to have dozens of people, and and now it's down to a handful. And yes, people move. You know, my son lives in Texas now, so, you know, I I have to deal with the reality that he he probably, I ain't going to see him every Christmas. You know, at some point he'll get married and have grandkids. But I, I remember seeing certain families that were large families, and now it just seems like there's been this separation because of distance, because we're too busy, but it has an impact, again, on that power of more, uh, this month's blog. All of this is really integrated into that blog, the power of more. And yes. so how, how we do it. So I, I'll go ahead, Martha. I, I see you unmuted. I just wanted to say that I think the family is under attack. And this is just my personal thoughts because it is designed after the body of Christ. And since the church is under attack, if they can tear, if if the family can, can become totally torn down, then everything can run rampant. And, and I say that because I don't know if you saw the young girl that killed her mother Mm -hmm. um and she's back in the state they she arrived this morning at nine and she has to they have already put her in jail already but Mm -hmm. how do you kill your mother that is so mind-boggling how do you even get to that place you know that was her adopted her adopted mother right that's not her yes Right. Yeah. And and I'm but wondering still, if that's part of it because there was, I don't know, but I'm wondering if that's what that was. If that was some of it. But I'm I'm just yeah. saying, but how how do you wrap yeah. your mind around that? And that is so true. That's hard. Uh, so yeah. you can really tie it back to uh your thoughts of what you will do as long as you keep going over in your mind with those same thoughts. It eventually will manifest itself. So we have to actually pray that God will keep our mind and that he will also give us good thoughts uh, concerning our our daily lives. Mm -hmm. Because without that, the idle mind is really the devil's workshop. It really is. So we have to 
stay on course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Audrey, I saw you lean forward. Were you trying to say something? Because I didn't, I didn't want to miss you if you had something to say. You on mute. We can't hear you. There you go. Yeah. No, I was trying to hear what she was saying because I thought that was her mother. I didn't know she was adopted. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was because of a, the, the guy she wanted to be with and something like that. Yeah. yeah she was adopted by, uh, that was her adopted mother. And yes, it was something to do with a boyfriend. And yes, she was younger. So young, teen, one day teenager ish or something. But yeah. So, mom, what do you think about the question? How do we get the uh, family to become tight knit again? I don't. Wish know. Know. <laughs> I, I can't. I I don't know because I don't understand what's going on anyway. It is a. It's a negative force that's out. That's keeping families apart. It's, you know, it's just, I don't know. Cause so here's a question, mom. I know um, when my grandmother, your mom <laughs> was around, um, we all were together, all of your sisters and brothers and the whole thing. So then all of my cousins and all of the cousins of the cousins and then all of the friends of the family of the cousins and of the uncles and the aunts, it's just so many people. And so down through the years, um, we continue to have all these gatherings with a whole bunch of cousins and we packed out jam, packed. Um, then as my grandmother passed on, uh, then you and your sisters continued on with keeping all of the family. We did a lot of things and continued that on. Do you think it's because of my generation now that we're not stepping up? to keep it going because you and your sisters and who you you all kept it going and so now it's it's like our generation because now we're your children and no. we're, we're is it uh, because of us and we're not pushing our kids because you and my aunts and all of them kept us coming we you you made it clear that this was important that no we all come together on these holidays it wasn't like we had an option like oh i'm not coming home for christmas <laughs> when i was at <laughs> illinois state i got on my illinois state university shirt but when i was at illinois state it wasn't like i knew where i was going to be at chris it wasn't even an option so somewhere uh, in there it was understood that this is what we what was expected of, of us even as we became young adults and got older we were there so do you think it's because of our generation now? Maybe we're we're not telling our kids, hey, we still need to be uh, being a part of this. We all need to be there. This is important. This is what we do on this time. We don't make ex other plans. You bring your friends to our to our gatherings. Is that I, I think it's, yes, I think it's your generation. And I don't understand the reason why they're not pulling together because. They were all raised together and they know that they're supposed to step up and do the part. Each one is supposed to take over. But since mm -hmm. the virus came, that also caused a, a little rip where mm -hmm. people have not been getting together because they wanted to keep on um, catching the virus. So I don't know if it's gonna come back together again. I don't know if the family will do that. I don't know if after this, virus if when when it's over will they be able to rekindle that same um thing we always had where we all got together on different occasions like thanksgiving and um christmas and the fourth of july and those days where the whole family would get together it's up, do you up to the, the, the new generation to hold up and do what they're parents taught them to do because uh, there's not many left. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's a difference in how we respond or respect your generation to like my nieces or those younger than me? How do they respect us? Because I'm, I'm wondering if there will, is that the, the, the breakdown? Is it from the respect, the reverence or the honor? Do you think that changed over time? 
Yes, I do. I think it changed. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. uh, during my time, we all respected our elders regardless. And if it's mm -hmm. your uncle, your uncle, your grandmother, mm -hmm. who it is, you have to respect them. And you were taught mm -hmm. to respect them. But I don't know mm -hmm. if the new generation is teaching their children to respect mm -hmm. elders. Do you see it in our family? Do you see, look, look, you guys, I'm so sorry, Isaac. Yeah. <laughs> there's somebody who we talk about the family. <laughs> but I'm just asking, do you feel like from our family, do you feel the same type of respect or honor in our three tier of generations, do you see like where I respected my grandma? Uh, do you feel like your grandkids respect you in that same light with that reverence? Across I, and your I, nieces my, and nephews. I I think they respect me, but not in the, as strongly as we did, or it okay. once was. Okay. Because uh, okay. once one said something, that was it during those okay. days. Dimitri, I saw your head shaking the same, like she's saying the same thing. I'm just kind of going through, but I see Isaac, our time yeah. is kind of running out. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pray because I see Gail put a prayer request in, but I wanted to give Demetrius a chance because I didn't know if you wanted to say something or not because I thought you might have unmuted a couple of times. So I didn't yeah, I did. I, yeah, I would want to say about that God had put, it's already in the word. Every time I get ready to talk, my grandbaby always mess with me. So I just wanted to say that it's already in Revelation when God said how your, uh, your daughter's going to be against mother and father against son. So it's already written that it's going to wax worse and worse. So, you know, and plus family is God's first institution. So, you know, Satan going to try to attack the family anyway, because, you know, mm -hmm. that's God's first institution is family. Right. That's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's good. This is definitely. Yeah, I, I know uh, Tawanda said we got to pray. Um, and Sharonda said it's not just, you know, the our generation or the younger ones, but it's all of us. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and pray because I, I want to make sure we end on time and honor everybody's time. But I thank you all for your input today. I think we had some uh, lively and important conversation. And uh, we can always pick it up again uh, if you all ever want to revisit this. But let us uh, pray. Lord, we just come right now. We thank you and honor and bless you uh, for just this opportunity to come before your throne of grace. We lift up, Lord, Demetrius again, asking that you would comfort her and her family over the passing of uh, her stepfather. We pray, uh, Lord, for Lori, uh, as we haven't seen her uh, today that you would just bless her and her family and everyone who is a part of this Cafe Mana uh, community. And we pray, Lord, for Novella. Uh, Lord, she's having some serious health challenges. You know what they are, but we know that you are the master physician and that you have the power to heal, to deliver, and to set free. So we pray that you would touch Novella. We pray that you would touch anybody else who's a part of our community uh, that is sick in their bodies, who has financial needs, who has relational needs, Lord, we just pray uh, that you would provide and supply, that you would do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, and we will give your name the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, let me pronounce the blessing on you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. God bless you all. We will see you all next week where we will be doing things you should know.